And in particular, I would like to introduce exponential functions. So we'll start with a simple mathematical definition. An exponential function is a function of the form q of x equals a times b to the power of x. And here, b certainly, and usually a as well, should not be negative. So a positive number times another positive number raised to the power of x. So that's what an exponential function is as a form of a, but that isn't very descriptive. So let's ask more generally, what? does an exponential function represent? So for linear functions, for example, there's a very easy way of summarizing what linear functions are. Linear functions occur when we have constant rates of change. Quadratic functions, polynomials, and rational functions are harder to summarize in that way. But exponential functions have a very clear real world meaning. Exponential functions. represent a constant percentage rate of change. So when you say it like that, exponential functions sound as if they should be similar to linear functions. I mean, they both have the phrase rate of change in there. Um, it's just that exponential functions have this additional word percentage, but that additional word is important that causes exponential functions to behave very differently from linear functions. So to sort of showcase what I mean by this, um, let's say, dear, are introduced into an animal preserve. The number of deer in the preserve grows at a rate of 7% per 
prayer. Something like this, you see, we have this rate of change, this constant rate of change, but what's making this different from a linear function is that percentage symbol. And population growth is a classic example of situations that tend to be exponential. But by the end of this course, we're going to see a lot of applications of exponential functions. It's an incredibly varied type of function that is used to model an extremely varied array of real world situations. For now, though, let's just take another look at that formula. Q of x equals a times b to the power of x. We've got this constant a. We've got this constant V, probably the most natural and immediate question is, what do A and B represent here? A is Fairly straightforward. A is the y intercept of the graph. And this often in real world situations corresponds to A being an initial value. Like, go back to this D example. Say that I tell you how many D are initially in this enclosure. Say that I tell you that 50 D are introduced into this preserve. Then A is going to be that initial value. So A is going to be 50. B is more interesting. So if we've got an exponential function, we've got this constant percentage rate of change. And presumably <laughs> this constant percentage rate of change is showing up in the equation in some way. It's showing up in B, but B is not the percentage rate of change. B is one plus the percentage rate of change. And there's more, a little more to it than that. B is one plus the percentage rate of change, where the percentage rate of change has been converted to a decimal. Let's remind ourselves how we go from percent to decimal. If we have 50%, we 
you can think of having a decimal place there, 50.0%. And to go from percent to decimal, we take that decimal place and we move it twice to the left. So 50% is 0.5 or 0 0.50 written as a decimal. Similarly, say we have 7.2%. If we wanted to convert that to a decimal, this decimal place would go once, twice to the left. And you have to fill in that missing zero. So 7.2% as a decimal is 0 0.072. Going to our B year example, we've got 7.0%. To write this as a decimal, that decimal place moves twice to the left, and we get 0 0.07. B is there for 1.07. Remember what I have written here, B is one bus, the percentage rate of change. Now that we have A and we have B, we can write down the form of a. And I know I used X in a previous frame, but probably 99 times out of 100, you're, um, when you're working with exponential functions, your variable is going to be time. So it's very, very common to you is a T as our variable. <laughs> as for this convention of naming our function, capital Q instead of F, I'm not sure where that comes from, but it is a very common convention. You see it a lot. So that's the basics of exponential functions. I have, of course, more to say, but does anybody have any questions so far? Then I'd like to go back to this frame and I'd like to make the observation that I used the phrase rate of change here. I didn't say anything about increasing. So if a quantity is decreasing by 2% every week, that's also exponential. We can have exponential increase and we ha can have exponential decrease. And the question I want to ask, or not the question exactly, the observation I want to make is that if an exponential quantity is 
decreasing. This B is going to be modified a little. If the quantity is decreasing, then B is going to be one minus the percentage rate of change. So I know here I just sort of made this statement. Oh, B is one plus this. I now want to begin that statement. B is one plus the percentage rate of change if the quantity is increasing. It's one minus the percentage rate of change if the quantity is decreasing. And we can do an example of this. Um, uh, bacteria colony covers two square inches after so is applied to it the colony starts to shrink at a rate of 17% every hour. This represents an exponential function. It's exponential because we've got this constant percentage rate of change. An exponential function has an A and a B. A is usually just something you read right out of the problem. A is going to be your initial value. In this case, the bacteria colony initially covers two square inches. B Because this colony is shrinking in size, is one minus the percentage rate of change. So one minus what? Someone tell me. Wait, zero one seven. Folks. So the decimal is here, right? Yeah. So when you move the decimal place twice to the left, you just get 0. 0.17. And let me see, 0. 0.83. And then, once you have A and B, you have all the information you need to write down this function, Q of T. And once you've written the function down, you can ask questions and make predictions. 
I mean, that's U is the function we just found to ask a question. How large will the colony be after three hours have passed? These questions you're basically never going to be able to do in your head. It's basically always going to be going to our calculator. So let's get our calculator warming up. But I mean, all we're doing here is we're letting T be a three. We're going to take that and we are going to plug it into there. And let's make sure we can all do this on our calculator. So two times point eight three, and this carrot, this sort of little up pointing arrow, is your power button. Two times point eighty three to the third power. Press enter one point one four four. If we round to three decimal places, I have the memory of a goldfish. One point one four four. So we're going to spend the rest of the semester talking about exponential functions. So we still have a lot to say about these, but with the, you getting the test tomorrow and everything, I don't have a lot I want to say right now. Does anybody have any questions before the in-class work gets distributed? Okay, this material is not on the test.